I'm lucky enough to be able to work with people all around the world and teach them how to TIG weld. But I wanna ask you, what do you think the most important thing is that I teach all of these people? Welding, right? Not exactly. When I'm working with students, whether it's in person or in my online training program on my website, we always cover pretty much the exact same thing. Definitely cover a lot of welding and we meticulously work our way through a process of exercises to get a full understanding of what we're trying to do and how to do it. But that's definitely not the most important thing that I teach people. One of the biggest things that I teach people is the skill of breaking down and scrutinizing their own work. If you've ever been to school for welding or try to show anybody some of your work only to have them say, not good enough, go do it again. I had to deal with this reality for years. And unfortunately for me, that approach did nothing to help me learn. One of the biggest parts of my program when I work with people is to teach people what they're looking at. I show them a series of exercises that definitely gives them some skill of how to break down what they're looking at and more importantly, going forward, how to learn from it. There's so many times when we've just done something where we can just take a step back and really have a close look at what happened. This can help us out in a bunch of different ways. If we do something that looks absolutely beautiful, we can use some of these skills that I teach to find out what it was exactly that made things go so well. And going forward, how do we duplicate this as easy as possible? If things aren't going exactly the way we think they should, this skill really comes in handy to break down what we're seeing in front of us compared to what we're looking for. Let's take a look at this picture here. Here we can see one of the most difficult joints that I teach people. This is the lap weld. This is a joint that most people can learn pretty quickly. However, the small details of quality and appearance take quite a long time for some people to understand. I remember when I was learning, I got stuck on this one for months. So again, take a look at the photo. What do you see that's wrong with this? The first thing that I see is one of the most common things that people struggle with on this joint. As we see here on the bottom edge, we have lack of fusion. And how has this happened? Not only do we wanna identify what the problem is when we see it, but we wanna break down what caused it and how we can fix it next time. As we can see, one of the most important things I teach when I'm teaching anyone, even on my YouTube channel, I talk about it all the time. What is it? It's the start. Take a look at this one here. See how it is relatively underdeveloped as far as fully blending into the base plate on the bottom edge. And also you can see we have a little bit of erratic cleaning action as well. So taking a look at our start here, this actually looks like it might be the thing that we need to pay attention to. So if we look at the problem, which is a little bit later down the weld, the problem is actually at the beginning. We wanna address this problem where it actually came from and that is the start. When we see a problem with the weld, the biggest skill I wanna teach and equip anybody with is how to improve and prevent this problem. And we can only really Really, truly understand how we can do this by taking the time to learn and understand what we're looking at. So while some people may think there is a problem with fusion, which obviously there is, we always want to take a quick look at why we have this problem. Breaking down what actually caused this problem at the root cause gives us a much better idea of what we need to sit down and practice. Let's take a look at another photo here. This is a butt weld and we can see it obviously does not look the way we want it to. Again, we see lack of fusion on the edges and we see our filler material standing up way too high in the center. We may think that this is the problem. And again, this is a problem, but taking a look at what's actually going on at the root cause here, what is the actual problem? Take a good look, can you guess? Take a look at the overall stepping distance. As we can see, things are stepped really close together. So close together, in fact, that it's not giving enough space for each puddle to blend out the way it needs to on the edges and fully fuse with the base material. So as we step too close together, we are making the filler stack up too high in the center. So essentially too much filler and each step is too close to one another. We have too much filler piling up in the center and it's going to block our heat from doing its job. Allowing a little more space Space for things to blend and take the shape we need will then allow our heat to do its job properly. So more spacing, allowing more heat to do its job properly, we see these puddles blend out a bit further. In doing so, take a look at how our edges will change. Approximately the same amount of filler material, but we get a way different result. We see the line on the edge become straight and blended properly and our filler material has a much easier time of blending out all the way to the edges. Whereas before it was stacking up in the center. So once again, we took a look at a few of the things that we saw absolutely was a problem with this joint. And in doing so, we actually tried to figure out what was actually causing this problem. And now that we know what that problem is, we know exactly what we can work on next practice session. So there's a redemption one of a lap weld here. This one looks awesome. 
nice, clean, straight edges, and our filler material has blended out and taken perfect shape with the base plate for the most part. Now, taking a look at all these details that we like with this one, what are some of the things that could have contributed to this? We already talked about it. Take a look at the start. Do you see how these have blended in right away, both at the start at the beginning and the stop start in the middle? One of the biggest things, I just said it, we go over it all the time on my YouTube channel, is we're gonna focus and pay extra attention to our starts. In my program, one of the approaches that we actually do is we spend time specifically working on only our starts. This is a way that we can properly get up off the ground with each weld, and once we get up off the ground and start running with it, we can maintain this easily as we move along. So when I get set up to teach somebody, we follow these outlines so they can learn to break this stuff down for themselves. Fully trying to understand what is happening has given me a much better understanding of the trade and how I can teach it most effectively. Taking a look at the examples that we've just been over here should show you that there are a lot of things behind the scenes and whether it was a good or bad pass, there's a lot that we can learn from it. Most people don't even take the time to realize. So here are some things you can do. Take a look at some of these details with your own work. The first thing we're gonna take a look at is an overall bird's eye view of your width. Taking a bird's eye view of your entire pass, how was your overall control of your width and profile? Were things narrow at the beginning? And as you approach the end, did they flare out and start to get a little bit wider? Take a look at how these variables went. And then moving ahead to think about why this happened, how to prevent it. This is all very important skills to work on. Your overall profile of your starts will tell you a lot about how you did with it. And if you really master and understand your starts, once you begin moving and you learn basically how to control things when they become a little bit hotter and a little more difficult to handle, especially usually towards the end of a pass. The second thing we can take a look at with your own work is your edges. Looking at your edges, especially on joints such as a lap weld or a butt weld, these are notoriously tricky joints to get the edges to blend in properly. Scrutinizing how these went, whether good or bad, will tell you a lot about how you did with your starts as well as the details once you began moving. The blended edge where your filler material will fuse with the base material can tell you a lot about what is happening when you start and move on through the length of your weld. Perhaps the blending was even too smooth. We in that case would have a concave pass, which indicates essentially excessive heat input. Perhaps the blended line was much too rigid and didn't have a smooth transition between the filler material and the base material. This would definitely indicate that things have not prepared enough to allow this blending between the two materials. And the last thing we can take a look at is your overall appearance. What does it look like? Is it shiny? Does it become dull or a little bit chalky as we approach the end of the plate? These are features that are gonna tell you how you did as far as your heat input goes. If we see things look shiny, whereas towards the end of the pass, they start to look cloudy and dull, looking at the details like this are gonna help you break down how you did as far as your overall heat input and your heat control went. These details are really important, not only to practice while you're welding, but especially after you've finished welding. There's a lot of work that comes after you finish a weld. And a lot of these things usually go unnoticed by a lot of students. There's a lot that you can break down going over your own stuff and before you even begin welding at all. I made a video a couple months ago that covered a lot of things you can do to prepare your joint and doing it all before you even start your actual weld. That episode is right here. Check it out if you haven't seen it already. Today, go do a random act of kindness for a stranger. For Pacific Arctic Welding, my name is Dusty, Phil, and Shill. We'll talk soon. Peace.